Hi, I'm Stephen Tronicek with HorrorOrigins.com. Horror Origins is a website about horror content where you can find reviews, articles, and interviews. Horror Origins also runs a festival that takes feature films, short films, and scripts. You can find all of this at HorrorOrigins.com or at Horror Origins on Twitter. This interview is part of a series for Women's History Month where we talk to a number of incredible screenwriters working in the horror genre. Today I'm talking to Lisa J, a screenwriter whose script The Seraphim drifts around script writing Twitter like a legend, is an ISA top 25 screenwriter in 2021, and was the winner of the stage 32 search for new blood. Hi. Hi, Stephen. Thanks for having me. Of course. I mean, when, just as with the other guests, you know, I was asking around who would be the best person to have for these interviews, and immediately a couple of names came up, and yours was one of the first names that kept popping up, and I'm like, nice. well, got to... Uh, I got to take advantage of that. But um, anyway, you know, I we're talking about horror movies. So I wanted to start things off easy and talk about subgenre in that horror is oh, yeah. a lot of things. So what's your favorite subgenre in horror? Oh, gosh. Yeah, I love the subgenres. That's a great, I could talk all day about that. My two favorite, I have two favorite. I can't even narrow it down. Um, I love folk horror and I really love supernatural horror. So I think I write in a combination of those two because those are those are my two favorites. That's my jam. There's been some wonderful folk horror films coming out recently, I'd say. Like, of course, you know, Midsummer is really like uh uh Midsummer comes to mind immediately. And uh even Ben Wheatley's kill list or so, if you could kind of call that folk horror in the last 25 minutes or whatever. Um so like, you know, I uh I, I write a lot of horror too, and I tend to write about things that, you know, come from me. Do you ever scare yourself with your writing? I tend to. Do you? Have you scared yourself? A little bit. I mean, <laughs> it's like, it could be a little, it could be a little taxing sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've totally freaked myself out. And yeah, I, I scare myself quite a bit. Um, once I was in uh, Cotto Lake, which is like the swamps, um, the borders between Texas and Louisiana. And I used to, when we lived in Texas, I used to go up there and, and write a lot. And I'd rent a cabin and spend some time there because it was any excuse to be there because I love to rent a kayak and kayak out on the swamps. And um, so I was up there for a few days and I was writing a horror story about swamps. And I scared myself so bad that I was sure I was staying in this cabin. It was like a really big place too. And I was sure somebody was going to break in and try and kill me. So I found this like barbecue, you know, one of those long barbecue forks in the kitchen. And I booby trapped the door with a bunch of chairs. So if anybody came in, I'd hear it. And I slept with this thing like on my chest, like clutched to my chest. I was terrified. So yeah, I do scare myself a lot. Oh man, that's that's awesome. And I mean, like, I'm sure that that goes right into the writing and whenever the reader takes it, it's like, because uh, I think a lot of the emotion whenever you start writing it really goes right into the script oh, yeah. um so you know we were talking about like subgenres and things that horror can do and something that always interests me with horror is that it's one of the best genres to get away with like strange emotional leaps and a bunch of inconsistencies and um I, I just wanted to talk ask you how you approach logic in a horror script yeah, that's that's a that's a big that's a big deal to me because I write a lot of stuff that's um, out there or hallucinatory or you know and supernatural a lot of a lot of things about the supernatural just don't make a lot of sense. So I really love using that, and I do get pushback on it sometimes. And um, but then again, I'm a very logical person, <laughs> just in nature. So I think that that. I, if I wasn't the way I was, I could, I would probably go really off the rails a lot further, but I, I do think I try and ground things fairly well, but I had a, there was a big producer, um, a big name that had been on some big projects that had read the Seraphim and I had a general with him and um, he said to me, what did he say? Uh, he, he was trying to get me to, to ground it more. And I, I don't want to, I like it the way it is. And he said to me as a criticism, he wasn't saying this because he thought it was great. He said, um, the bigger the project, the more money there is, the more logic it has to make. 
Mm. Because the more um, the more producers have to have a say in it, the more people have to sign off on it. And so the more money you put in there, the more logic there has to be. And I was like, oof, that makes sense. Yeah. So if you're going to go totally off the rails, I think um, in my mind that said, keep it low budget. So, yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, you know, it actually leads, a question just popped up in my head about um, if you have any thoughts, particularly on thematic logic in storytelling. Because um, horror movies, I mean, they're, they're very influenced by theme, especially because, you know, monsters is kind of pop out of theme. And I just wanted to know if you had any thoughts on that specifically. Um. I'm not sure I understand what you mean by thematic logic. I think theme theme is tone and, and theme is, is everything in horror. Um, if your tone isn't consistent, if your theme doesn't, if all that doesn't like gel and really make sense um, with what you're trying to say, uh, people are gonna get bumped really easily. Um, what was the question again? Oh, sorry. Oh, no, I, I think you pretty much answered the question, actually. I guess what I meant by thematic logic was the idea of like um, things, as long as they make thematic sense, can typically make yeah. sense within a story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah but then again, there's things like, okay, like I rewatched The Village the other day, which mm -hmm. is a brilliant movie. And it's yeah, so beautiful. Oh that, my God, it's so pretty. That James so, Howard score. Oh yeah. Yeah. And there's so many um, moments in that that are so gorgeous and beautiful and, and moving. And, and I got so annoyed because there's a couple of logic jumps that just annoy the heck out of me and it ruins the movie for me. I'm just like, there was no reason she had to go out in the woods. Why would they send a blind girl out in the woods? Any one of them could have gone. There's, there's just no reason for that. And so, yeah, I, I think that I'm such a logical person that I don't bump up in, into that a lot because things have to make sense to me. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, absolutely. So um, as far as horror goes, what, what do you think the, is the best thing um, horror does? Like, what is something that horror does better than any other genre? Oh, I think social commentary. I think it, it its ability to point out, um, you know, horrible things that we need to think about is, is so much better than drama because it can appear in a drama to get way too heavy and mm -hmm. also way too preachy. And in horror, you can just bury that shit and people uh -huh. get it, but you can have a good time and never mention it. And people know exactly what it's about. So I love that. I love oh. the subtlety of burying a, a social issue. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, get out us, people under the stairs, like the, the wicker man, even. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. like, <laughs> the, the the cop stuff with the wicker man and the um the way that it interacts with the cult is just incredibly interesting and so funny even <laughs> i love the wicker man the original one well they're both great but the original one's amazing yeah. <laughs> and uh not the bees <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah um is, is there anything you think horror can't do Oh, I've never thought about that before. Um, win a, an Oscar? <laughs> oh, that's not true. Silence of the Lambs, but yeah, I, I think that um, I think that its biggest drawback is that people don't take it seriously. Like I have a very hard time when I tell people that don't know me or when I first meet people or when I first work a job and I tell them I write horror, people immediately think you write schlock you know that you just write dumb stuff and you're not a real writer and they don't take the genre seriously and there's such good work coming out of horror and it gets underestimated a lot i think yeah absolutely especially recently you know with that renaissance of like the witch and hereditary and midsummer and all that it's um it's really starting to make a difference and i i almost feel like the um the consensus on horror is really starting to turn a little bit right now so. which i'm excited about mm -hmm. so um given that it's women history month i wanted to ask some questions about women in horror and your thoughts on them because it's certainly a little bit more um a little bit of a divisive issue <laughs> but um what, who do you think is the best heroine that the horror genre has produced 
Ripley, without a doubt. It's got to be Ripley. And, and that's got to be a very popular opinion is probably everybody's first answer. I, I love aliens. I love all the alien movies. And gosh, what a great character. And I love that it wasn't written for a woman. And, and then she became like the iconic woman in a horror movie. Yeah. Yes. How about you? Oh, me? Um, you, um, you know, I for some reason, the first thing that pops into my head is that I really like the Moth Diaries for some reason. Like, everybody hates that movie. And <laughs> I just love those characters in the Moth Diaries. <laughs> or um, uh, Lucky McKee's May. I really love Lucky McKee's May, uh, which is just crazy gore movie, but um, has a really interesting lead character. Wait a minute. I it. saw May. I, I have seen May. It was just mm -hmm. been so many years. Yeah, that was amazing. Gosh, like the Frankenstein was... at the end yes. or so, that final mm. shot. <laughs> oh man, it's beautiful. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, Ripley and um, and the character from Us. I gotten the, I've gotten those from the two other interviewees, and I mean, there's a reason why those are such popular characters. They're just very well written. I just love them, and Sigourney Weaver is just incredible in that performance. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what, what do you think is the most common cliche for women characters in horror movies? I don't know. There's so many, God, what's the most common? Uh, I, I hate having storylines revolve around anything to do with women and sex. The, if a woman's in it, there's got to be rape or violence towards a woman, or she's pregnant or she lost, lost a baby or, um, I just want to see more women just be people, you know, and not have every their presence be justified by something to do with their sex. I mean, not that you can't have those stories. I've written those stories, but if if but there shouldn't be so many of them. You know, maybe maybe don't use that as your first idea. Maybe maybe look a little deeper for what could be motivating them. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I mean you know, you, you get into John Burgess's ways of seeing and you're like, well, why did they put that specific trope on screen? Like, what, what is wanting to be seen there? And it's, it's yeah, it's, it's kind of a tough, uh, it's a <laughs> tough question to answer, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I, those movies should exist if that's what your theme is. I wrote a, a movie about incest and it was about incest. So yes, that, that's, but I'm a woman and that was the whole theme of the movie. Um, but if it's just, uh, if it's just a turning point or a plot point or a motivation, I just, I urge you to try and look a little harder. I, I've noticed some extreme horror films, certainly they, they don't necessarily back up some of the content that they have with you know theme or character and yeah that, that certainly becomes a problem yeah you know? um so uh how how would you say you actively go about subverting some of those tropes in your writing um if i find that i am falling back on a trope and catching myself and being like wait a minute what am i doing it's normally because I haven't, I don't have a good enough grasp of the character as a person yet. And um, it's about, for me, going deeper into really understanding who they are as a person and getting in touch with that. So I don't just try and put things on top of them and situations on top of them. And so if I catch that, I'm like, okay, I don't know this person well enough yet. I need to go deeper into the person and who they are. Yeah, this is a great answer. I mean, the writing process, I think it's half like just trying to figure out who your characters are yeah. and how it really like melds together into something that feels original or, you know, interesting even. Um, and logical, as we were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Love that logic part. <laughs> so there, there's some great, horror films coming out. Who, who do you think is the best um, female director working in horror right now? Gosh, I can't answer that. There's so many good ones. Um, I mean, I love Jennifer Kent's Babadook. Mm -hmm. I love, I mean, American Psycho is, is, is brilliant. Um, 
Anna Lily on um, reports. I mean, she hasn't had anything out since the girl walks home alone at night, has she? But that was I think amazing. she did the Bad Batch as well. Okay, after, I was that, that after that? Um, but it, it was it was pretty all right. I mean, it's it's pretty good. The um it's definitely some horror elements in there. It's always nice to see yeah. Jason Momoa and stuff. Oh God, I need to watch that. I mean, I love Karen Kusama. I love <laughs> Um, Lynn Ramsey. I just saw uh, St. Maud, you know, that new one by Rose Glass. And um, she has a brilliant vision. I mean, I can't wait to see more from her. I thought that was really amazing. The so, like, yeah, there's a lot of good people. The grasp of like storytelling, and especially in the sound of St. Maud was so, so wonderful. I just, I was blown away. I loved that film. Um, the and the the visuals and yeah it was very nicely done mm -hmm. um and you know i i like to end all of my interviews by asking a simple question uh if you could pick one horror movie to recommend to everybody in the audience who's listening to this what would it be oh, I, can't. See, I don't think that that's a good question because everybody <laughs> likes a different type of horror you know i mean horror is one of the very, very personal and specific things. What scares you? It's very <laughs> personal, you know? Um, the scariest horror movies, my tops are absolutely, number one, The Shining, always and will mm -hmm. be. That movie is a work of art and there's it's flawless. And it scares the heck out of me no matter how many times I've seen it. Um, the, the, the scariest I ever was watching a movie, I would say The Descent. Mm. That was terrifying to me. Absolutely terrifying. It was hard to watch. I didn't even enjoy it because I was so scared. It was so upsetting. Um, one of my favorites is just all time, just enjoyable experience and is the thing. I love the thing so much. So, I mean, there's, you know, I think it's a very personal kind of question of what somebody's going to like. Oh yeah, I absolutely agree. I agree with you on the shining as well. That's my favorite. And it just, it's, it, it's just, it's like there's something that exists beyond it that is scary. Wow. It's not the movie itself. It's like the aura or whatever. Yeah. And it's so awesome. <laughs> well, um, that's all the questions that I have. I want to, again, thank Lisa J for coming on and talking to me. And uh, again, this was with, I'm Stephen Trencheck with HorrorOrigins.com. And you can find Horror Origins stuff at HorrorOrigins.com or at Horror Origins on Twitter. And actually, before I we get off of this, I want to um, ask you where people can find you. Um, I'm on Twitter way too much. <laughs> My uh, handle is J, uh, just a J, Lisa J. And um, I hope to talk to you soon. And thank you for having me on. This has been fun. Yeah, absolutely.